Everyone, it's Ross, and I want to give you guys my most important tip for getting productive fig trees, whether that's in the ground, in containers, uh, really in a whole host of climates too, not just in my colder, shorter season climate. This is something I think is really important, and it starts now. This is the beginning of my season. Um, technically, our last frost hasn't even happened yet, but because we have a greenhouse, it's really warm outside, uh, we have a heater in here. We've really woken up these trees quite early. And now my trees are awake. And this is the time when they just start to wake up that you wanna pay attention to your trees because we wanna do a process called thinning. We wanna thin out these new branches. Why do we wanna thin out our new branches? Well, if you think about how a fig fruits, it's pretty different than most fruiting plants. Uh, like things like apples, for example, they fruit on spurs, which form on older wood, right? It really depends on what it is, but a fig will fruit on the new year's growth. Now it depends on the variety and it depends on where you guys live. But for most of us in the country and in the world, we're going to be focusing on main crop production, which is the growth that forms or the, the fruit that forms on new growth. And I'm going to show you guys that right now. So you can see here the trees behind me is that this here is a Breva. And this is the growth, the uh, figs that have formed on last year's wood. See this brown growth here? That's last year's wood. And then out comes from that wood is this new green growth. You can see that behind it. That is where the main crop's gonna form. So if their main crop's gonna form on that wood, it's really important to pay attention to that growth. So that's why I really feel like it's really important to thin this new growth out because our figs really love to put out tons of new branches. Look at this single branch that has put out four or five new growth points just on that one little branch. So what we need to do is come in here and thin that stuff out. Now I've already come in here a little bit try to get in here as much as I could. Everything's really jam-packed. It's difficult to maneuver in here. But I've already gone through the steps of pulling out suckers. These are basically new plants that come up from the base of our figs and actually suck away a lot of that energy. And you know what? These may actually fruit for us. They, they probably will, to be honest with you, the long enough season. But we want all of our energy to be focused up top where that auxin is actually suppressing the lower growth. And this is gonna be our strongest, thickest growth that's gonna be able to support the most fruit. All this stuff down here, as an example, if this were to leaf out, really just would not do the plant any justice, especially in terms of productivity. You can see right here, we've already taken off this particular growth point. We have one right here that's quite nice, another one right here that's quite nice, and also one back in here. I always talk about when we're pruning these, um, you know, we want to be focusing on how many fruiting branches we want to allow our tree to have for that current year. Fruiting branches, what does that mean? That's the branches that we allow the main crop to fruit on. So by limiting that number, we're getting fewer branches, right? But we're also getting thicker and stronger growth, which is really going to help support that that, uh, th those fruits and to be honest with you at the end of the day you're gonna have a more productive tree so what I would recommend is do exactly what I just said is come in here take out any of the suckers take out any of the growth that you think is just not gonna be strong really you have to assess your trees strength whether it's in the ground or it's in a pot you have to get yourself some hard and fast rules and the hard and fast rule that I like to live by is that for every one gallon of soil in a container or in the ground, if you could estimate that in the ground, you can have one fruiting branch. So if I have a 10 gallon size pot, I can have up to 10 fruiting branches for that year. Assuming that I'm feeding the tree correctly, it's getting full sun, et cetera, et cetera. Now the other thing we have to do, and why this is so important now, is because sometime around June, maybe the beginning of July, the end of May, we're gonna be pinching these trees. Now what's pinching? Pinching is going to induce the fruits. If we take off that apical bud, it changes the hormones in the plant and the thing just goes nuts. They start fruiting and uh, 
all the time before we get to that point, before we pinch, is all focused on growth, getting as much healthy, thick growth as possible so that when we come in here and really just take off this tip, and literally that's all it is, just see this tip right here? We break this off with our thumb. So let's say that this, instead of this particular limb here, it has four leaves right now. A fifth one's coming out right now. That means we have five nodes. So if we have five nodes, we have five potential figs here. But if this thing grows and grows and grows until about June, when I take the tip off, we're gonna have many more nodes for us to form potential fruits on. Uh, and this is really just the basics. I mean, once you get this down, I think, it's really, really simple from here. Um, I really do believe this starts now and that you have to do this as soon as you can. Sometimes your growth is already too far advanced to where it may not even be worth it. So make a judgment call, but ideally you should be taking these little growth points from lower on the tree, taking them off, just rubbing them off with your thumb. You can use pruning shears. If you're getting sap on your hands, make sure you wash your hands. Um, and also, it's really awesome because when I mentioned about pruning our trees, right, when we're pruning and focusing on selecting the certain branches that we want to keep, I want to show you guys my trees real quick that are not awake, and you can see the full form of them this way. Let me show you this because when you can see the tree and you can decide why it is we pruned this as an example, here's a great example, right? This is a fig called Hate of the Argentile, a really young tree. And this guy we actually grafted way down here and it's been growing ever since and it's got three nice limbs. You can see these three here. This is a really good size, I think, and a really good amount of fruiting branches for this particular pot. We have two trees actually in the same pot and it's in a 15 gallon size pot. So between the two trees, we can have about seven or eight branches, fruiting branches per tree. So that's the ideal goal. And what we want to do is because when we're pruning this, we want to focus on the amount of fruiting branches for next year, right? So let's say we, we did, we took off the tip here. See the tips no longer here. Here is the tip. Because we did that, it's now going to leaf out from this point here. It's going to leaf out from the back and it's going to form itself a nice little canopy right here. One going in this direction, one coming out towards us. This tree here, we're gonna limit the, the branches, one growing out this way and one growing out towards us. And the same thing with the branch behind it is we're gonna send them out pretty much in the direction that we want. So that we're not really making huge pruning cuts next year because of form. We're making them based off of future fruiting branches. Does everyone understand that? I think that's really the key when we're pruning these things. And not only is it key for when we're thinning them now, but think about a crisscrossing branch, right? It's gonna prevent these branches and these leaves from getting photosynthesis. So it's really important to not only do this now for production reasons, but also for pruning reasons, for the ideal form of the tree. I mean, this is just so, so important, I feel like. And uh, it just really is my most important tip that I wanted to share with you guys. We did do a video on this last year, uh, doing it again. We will do some videos on pinching. I mean, this is really the basics, but it's so, so important for getting productive fig trees. There's also a million other reasons too. And I know someone in the comments is gonna be like, oh, what about fertilizer? You know, uh, well, yeah, that's obvious, but I think thinning and pinching are the two techniques that you can use that are gonna be the most important to your success this year. And again, it starts right now. So hopefully you guys got this message early in the season. If it's too late in your season already, um, I would suggest just leaving that growth on there. Don't take off any growth that already exists. If it's just now freshly leafing out of the tree, that's the time you need to come in here and select the branches that you want, all right? So, all right guys, hopefully that, that one made sense and uh, I'll talk to you all soon. Hopefully you guys can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter if you wanna see more content like this. Also give this 
this video a thumbs up. Subscribe. Check out the new website, rossratty.wixsite.com slash blog. All in the description of the video. On the website is just a whole different type of content that we're going to be putting out for you guys. And uh, it's going to be really revolving around really interesting, important techniques such as this. Not just involving figs, but also involving a whole host of other different plants. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Take care. We'll catch you for tomorrow's video.